Hey everyone, have you ever wondered what these lines and arrows mean on the Enneagram symbol? Well, that's just not a geometric logo. Those actually mean something. And in this episode, we're going to be talking about what those lines and arrows mean, specifically related to types eight, nines, and ones of the gut triad. So welcome to Your Enneagram Coach, the podcast. Uh, we've helped millions of people around the world to help them discover, explore, and become the people that they've always longed to be. I'm Jeff, the co-founder of Your Enneagram Coach and CEO, and I am here with our Director of Coaching, Adam Breckenridge. Great job today, Adam. You wore the uniform. We're both wearing black shirts again. Yeah. Yeah. At this point, we don't even have to send a memo about it. It just happens. Now, um, do you have other... I mean, you've got Kansas City Chief shirts, obviously. Lots. And I've got Lots a lot of, of Razorback those. shirts, too. Yeah. No, I I have... Um, I have other t-shirts. They're most mostly uh, band t-shirts, so I don't usually wear them, you know, to work. Um, but yeah, I have several uh, black t-shirts, and I just wear a black t-shirt every day. I've, I've found that you can dress it up or down. You know, if you want to throw a jacket on with it, then all of a sudden it looks really nice. <laughs> That's awesome. It's like I'm not thought yeah. about that. I'm a but little I'll more tell sophisticated because my- mine are collared. Oh yeah, I'm on a collared and buttoned yeah. down, so I'm I'm yeah, a little more professional than you are, Adam. Yes, you are. Yes, well, in it, every it is way, fun. I'm in a small group, a little workbook study group, and um, there's a member of the group that wears band T-shirts, and but they're uh, '80s bands. So, oh yeah, I, I was sharing last night uh, what I listened to on my walks, and um, and they were wearing a Def Leppard shirt, and I ha- I realized, oh, I don't have a Def Leppard playlist, but I would imagine. Uh, on a good long walk, they could they could get you into yeah. some steps. Yeah, you're gonna you're gonna need to create a Def Leppard playlist. Yeah, you're gonna need to do that pretty quickly. Yeah, and I I have I I will occasionally wear a, another t shirt to work, but you know when I know I'm gonna be on camera. Oh, it's, it's, it's oh, going, nice. It's going it's going black t shirt. It's going um, black. Uh, it's great. Yeah. yeah. Well, hey, friends, thanks for joining us. Uh, in, in this particular series, our goal is to help you better understand uh, this dynamic element of the Enneagram, which is super, super helpful and is one of the uh, meaningful insights that attract people to the Enneagram and why they found it you find it useful. But not just descriptions, but what we're also wanting to help you is to give you an exercise uh, sort of a self check-in for you to practice self-leadership because these are not just written in stone. These This is what happens to your type, but you can actually self-lead. And we want to show you how to do that. So each of the main types on the Enneagram have two other connecting types that are connected by a line. Now, sometimes it's Uh, portrayed as an arrow. And the reason why is that it highlights the dynamic relationship that our main type has with this other number. And every number has two lines. One way to think about these lines and arrows is to think about the relationship uh, between Riley and her emotions in the movie Inside Out. Uh, Both Adam and I were inspired by that recently because our families have spent some time watching Inside Out too and talked about it a lot. But each of the numbers uh, in like in the movie, they're characters. And so what, we, what we'd like for you to think of is to think of them as your internal family or maybe your internal team, whatever metaphor comes to mind if it's best for you. Each of the four numbers is like each of the characters in Inside Out. Think of them like your internal family. And what works for me is thinking of them as my own internal team. So whatever metaphor works best for you. And inside out, each character represents an emotion. And for theatrical purposes, each character has its own personality as well. They have their own responses. They have their own core motivations. They're all fears, their desires, their weaknesses, their longings. And each of them wants to take control of the control board out of their own interests, their own perspective. Well, the same is true about the connecting types. Uh, All Although they, they don't necessarily represent an emotion, they do represent a personality. They have their own responses. They have their own motivations, their fears, their desires, their weaknesses, their longings. And each of them wants to take control out of their own interests. Now, each of the two Enneagram types that we are connected to by a line can show up in both healthy 
and unhealthy ways. Now, that's important to remember because oftentimes it's taught that one is a stress path and one's a growth path. Well, we're going through four different ways in which they show up, and they are both healthy and they're both uh, unhealthy. And remember this, because this is also important. We don't become these types. We simply take on the core motivations and the relational strategy of that type in order to try to meet needs. Also remember that each of these parts of us actually have positive intent. They are trying to the best of their ability to meet the need of our core selves. Now, they may be doing so in an unhealthy way, but always remember that these are strategies that we've picked up along the way in order to meet our needs. And so we need not dress ourselves with shame or self-contempt because actually that uh, betrays ourselves and it actually um, leads to self-sabotage in our relationships. So there are four terms uh, that we use to describe how these two connected types show up and how we relate to ourselves and how we relate to others. Uh, the first is the stress path. That's adopting the unhealthy attributes of that type. The growth path, adopting the healthy attributes. Now here are the new ones. The blind spot path is a way of relating where we are blind to, usually with close family and close friends. And then the last one is the converging the converging path, when we're most free from the limitations of our personality's restraints. So today we're going to be talking about types 8, 9s, and 1s. Be sure to go to the previous episodes. Uh, the first episode in the series, we go through what the different paths are, the stress, growth, blind spot, and converging paths. The next episode after that, we go through types uh, 5, 6, and 7 in the head triad. Today we're going to be covering the gut triad for types 8s, 9s, and 1s. Adam, you're going to take us through type 8. That's right. Yeah, let's talk about our eight friends. If you're an Enneagram 8, you are uh, connected to the uh, type 2. That makes up the type 2, makes up your stress path and your converging path. So uh, again, as Jeff just mentioned, you know, the stress path would be uh, 8s adopting the unhealthy attributes of type 2. And then the converging path for the 8 um, is when uh, the healthiest elements of, of every part is coming together to form your healthiest self. And so Let's talk a little bit about how to recognize the stress path traits of a type two showing up in the life of a type eight. Um, you may fall into or notice this part of you showing up that carries a belief that you have to earn other people's love and affection. And you do that by helping, supporting, advising, um, inserting yourself, um, over-functioning for people. A lot of my eight friends will fall into this trap because eights are so strong and so dependable that people, you know, the other family members or whatever teammates will put more and more and more on them. And, and eights can notice that they can feel trapped. And if I don't perform, if I don't meet these expectations, um, then I won't have the affection of these people that I, I want their affection. So this is one way. You might notice the type two stress path showing up. You may notice uh, yourself burying your own needs and emotions, which can already be a, a, an issue for the type eight, fearing that you know they'll be betrayed or their weaknesses will be used against them. But when you double click that, really double down on that, fearing that, man, if I have my own needs, um, it's going to hurt me to have my own needs. Uh, so I need to bury those. That's one way the stress path, uh, the type two stress path shows up. Um, you may notice yourself uh, being very reactionary and hurt when others don't help you or they don't care for you in the same way that you love and support and care for them. Um, and then you may also assume that, you know, all your motives and actions are pure with no hidden agenda. So sometimes there's a bit of that sort of rescuer complex of, I do, I do for everyone. And, and, you know, the reality is you, you probably do, but I, I do for everyone. I help everyone. And there's a, a real um, blindness to some of that, uh, those, those motivations and, and hidden agendas that are in there of like, I'm really serving in order to be loved or to be, to be uh, accepted. Um, that's a little bit about how the stress path shows up. Now let's talk about the converging uh, traits of a type two. Um, 
this is where, man, this is where as an eight, you really, really shine. Eights have such a passion for the underdog. They are justice oriented, you know, being in the gut triad, they, they, they have, they're big hearted and they have a big heart for the marginalized, the weak, the underdog, the helpless, the powerless. And when you notice yourself as an eight, stewarding your strength to serve the weak, um, to, to make yourself a servant leader, uh, this is when this is probably your converging uh, path. This is probably the best of the type two showing up and gifting you with a supernatural ability uh, to serve and, and, and to care for others. Um, you'll notice yourself, uh, a real tenderness, you know, when you, when you, ha- when you feel the bleeding heart and the compassion, the, the tenderness, that's, that's your, probably your converging path. Um, when you, when you're warmly responsive, you know, uh, rather than just, you know, bulldozing, but, but, a, but warmly responsive and generous with your time, talents, abilities, and social connections, uh, when you notice yourself, like I said, becoming more empathetic and aware, um, you know, and, and maybe sometimes you need to, to pause in your pursuit of justice to tend to immediate wounds and needs around you. This, this is usually an example or usually an, uh, a fruit of, okay, you're on your best path. You're becoming your best, most mature self. And this is that converging path where the type two part of your heart is showing up to really gift you and really maximize on your power, um, as, as an eight. Um, sometimes we call that meekness, Jeff. It's like, isn't meekness, uh, power uh, under restraint? Like it's like power Mm, that's stewarded, you know? Sure. And this is that eight and two part, you know, working together. So, um, okay. Eights are not only connected to two, but if you look at the lines and arrows, you're also connected to five. And the five makes up the, um, the blind spot and the growth path, the growth path and the blind spot path. And again, this is usually shows up in your most secure relationships when you really kind of let your guard down. Um, but you may notice that you're becoming fiercely independent, you know, having like taller, thicker boundaries and walls to protect yourself um, and, and sort of withdraw from people. If you've got people that you live with that are saying, Hey, I'm lonely with you and you're a type eight and, and you, you know, most of the time it's like, I'm right here. You know, my, I'm fiercely present. My presence is known everywhere I go, but it may be an indication that, okay, you're, you're withdrawn right now. Um, you've put up some walls and this is one of the ways that the type five can show up, um, in that blind spot for you. Um, if you notice that before moving forward, you need to really use your intellect to sort out your feelings and desires before you move forward. You need to store up more information. Um, if, if you grow tired of always being the protective one and you see yourself needing to detach, um, if you find yourself becoming secretive, more isolated, uh, again, to protect yourself from betrayal or from being depleted, um, if you feel that you know, you're alone to care for and protect yourself. This is, this is all evidences of that type five blind spot that can show up in the life of an eight. Uh, but now that's not the only way type five shows up for the eight. It also shows up in that growth path. And this is where you begin to notice a healthier uh, g- gifts that the type five brings you as an eight. So it, it can show up as combining your intellectual insights with your intense passion uh, to produce original works, to, to bless the world. You may notice yourself generously giving others, you know, the, the, your, your helpful insights and the information that you've gathered, um, you know, using your brilliance and insights in, in very generous ways, um, connecting with others, not just on a passionate level, but on an intellectual level. And, you may become more introspective in a healthy way, like more, it's okay to be in your head a little bit <laughs> uh, and examining your, your inner world a little bit. And type fives are very comfortable in that, in that inner intellectual world uh, or just the world of themselves. Uh, and so you may notice yourself more aware of your inner world, you know, knowing when to, having the wisdom to know when to relax, when to recharge your body, 
uh, when to give yourself away and when to, you know, retreat into some solitude so that you can recharge. This is, you know, that way eights, eights can really burn out Jeff because they, they're, they're so passionate and they, they give so much and they work so hard. But one of the, one of the gifts of that top five is to show up and say, Hey, let's, uh, let's know when to dial back the intensity and let's know when to lay down the tools and rest and relax and take care mm-hmm. of ourselves." Uh, so, um, this is, this is an example of how the type five shows up in the life of an eight. Um, let's talk about, uh, Jeff, you want to talk us through aware, the aware exercise? Yeah. So aware stands, it's an acrostic for a check-in exercise that you can do at any moment. Uh, and it can be fast. It can be something that you spend a whole morning doing, but it's a way of checking in when you, you start to see that one of these connecting types. So for the type eight being the type two or the type five, when it's showing up in your life, the first part is to awaken to this type showing up in your life and how it's showing up. You may notice that it's showing up in your body. It could be a pain or a sensation in your body. Um, It actually may show up in your breathing, uh, let's say. It may show up in your thinking or how you're uh, emoting. These are all ways to simply awaken to the reality that this part of you is online and it's trying to meet a particular need. Number two is to welcome. And this is where we move away from contempt, self-contempt or shame or any kind of distorted way of thinking. And we actually welcome this uh, part of you without denying it or without justifying whatever attributes are showing up. We want to extend kindness and curiosity to this type. The next, next is ask. Start by asking yourself why this part of you is showing up in this particular circumstance. Perhaps it was a memory. Perhaps it was uh, a circumstance. Something happened at work or a family member said something to you in a particular way. Ask yourself, why is this part of me showing up and what does it want? What does it need? Next is to receive. Receive the gift that you are more than just this one part. You have other parts of you that can help you to identify your needs and move towards them in healthier ways. So for the type eight, you have a nine wing. You also have a seven wing. You also have your other uh, connecting type. So you could be the two or the five. But to kind of look around at the rest of your team members and to ask yourself, how could I more healthily um, approach this situation and what would be a healthy way to actually engage in a new way? And that's what the last one is, is engage. Uh, that's the E and aware. And that is to engage yourself and your relationships and your circumstances in a new way. You see, because the Enneagram is not simply written in stone where you are, uh, you are put in the box and these are the only options that you have, is that even whenever you're at your most unhealthiest, there is a way in which you can pivot, where you can change and a perspective change on what it is that you need Uh, And what it is that how other people can help you can actually help you to engage in a whole new way in a healthier way. Well, uh, why don't we move on? We're going to talk about type nine next. And type nines, they're connected to both type three and to type six. Now, for the the type uh, three part of you gives you the ability to invest in yourself and discover your desires and passions. Um, your, this also being connected to type three also causes you to publicly demonstrate your value and worth for recognition, uh, which is really important for the type nine who wants to devalue the value themselves and oftentimes uh, kind of hide behind other things and not extend their value and their worth. So let's talk about this three part of you and how it shows up because it can both be a growth Uh, path, the type that you adopt the healthier attributes, and it can be a blind spot for you. So what does it look like whenever it's serving for the purposes of growth? It's where you start to recognize and discover the desires and talents that God has given you, and you start to invest yourself in your own personal development. It draws out something in you that says, I'm not going to overlook myself anymore, and I'm going to enter into the world with intentionality. Perhaps it's part of you can help you to become more confident, interject and go after energetic and go after the things that bring you joy. Or perhaps maybe it could help you try to understand your authentic self by developing a healthier relationship with your inner world. And then lastly, you stop procrastinating. Uh, You actually are able to move through the inertia to get to the goals that you want to accomplish. This part, this type three part of you can actually help you to do these things. And so whenever you're stuck in a situation where you're not moving or you're avoiding and denying, 
perhaps even suppressing emotions. Uh, tap into the three part of you, maybe even give it a name and to ask what opinions, what thoughts does it have about what you could do in this moment? Uh, perhaps you could even think about type threes in your life that are healthier. And uh, sometimes I find that uh, true for myself. I've got some, I'm in a group, another group of a uh, small group of people. There's a lot of type threes and I was with them recently and it helped me with some business decisions I needed to make. Like, yeah, I wonder how he would respond to this. He'd probably do these things. And all of a sudden I was inspired and ready to go. Uh, well, the type three part of you can also be a blind spot for you. So that what that looks like is ignoring or suppressing your emotions. Um, and so you end up focusing on your achievements and what you're doing for people rather than your own goals. Uh, it's when someone exposes your weaknesses or failures, do you feel shame and believe that you are worthless, incompetent, or not good enough? So one last attribute of this uh, type three part of you is that uh, you sometimes are aware that uh, you're using flattery or charming, uh, a charming disposition to draw attention to your kindness and to your generosity in order to win the admiration of other people. So that's the three. So that's the growth uh, path and the uh, blind spot path. Now, let's look at the type six that's also connected to nine. It can show up in both healthy and unhealthy ways as well. So this six part of you gives you the courage to step out of your comfort zone and into unfamiliar areas with courage and with strength and insight. And it can cause you to be anxious and to fixate on worst case scenarios. Sometimes whenever Beth, I see the six part of her heart show up. I'm like, hey, sweetie, you're uh, coming over to my neighborhood, mm -hmm. and I, I'm not sure you can handle the anxiety of my hood. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Le leave, all, leave all the anxiety to me. That's yeah, right. I, I, got I will it. carry it for the both of us. <laughs> That's right. So let's talk about whenever this type six part of you shows up in an unhealthy way. So this would be the stress path. And so um, do you find yourself expressing your frustrations, dissatisfaction, self-doubt, and dread when anxiety comes up? Uh, do you have strong internal external reactions when someone blames or accuses you of something? Uh, that's a, definitely a, a, an unhealthy six attribute is defensiveness. And when uh, you sense that something's not right, do you become suspicious of others uh, and uh, start to test their loyalties? And then lastly, uh, do you fear that others will abandon you and that you'll be left alone? These are the six parts of you trying to answer the needs for security, the needs for assurance in relationships. Now, it may go about it in an unhealthy way, but this is a way of identifying it so that then you can practice some self-coaching and maybe start asking the other parts of you, how would you handle a situation when you're feeling abandoned, alone, or anxious? Well, uh, the type six can also be um, the converging path. That's the path where we're at our most healthiest. So um, do you take your insecurities to God, trusting that you'll give, uh, get, that he will give you all the clarity and the strength that you're going to need? Um, are you less accommodating, but still loyal, cooperative, and focused on your, the well-being of others? Uh, do you demonstrate your courage by stepping out of your comfort zone into unfamiliar areas? And are you committed to your own development, intentionally becoming more self-aware and awake in your own passions? Now, the aware exercise is similar for the type 9 as it was for the type 8. But first is to simply awaken. Awaken to which of these parts are showing up. But think about it in terms of what it is that, that they need. Uh, number two is to welcome. When a child comes to you with a question and wants a need, uh, you don't look at them with contempt, but rather uh, you want to extend kindness and maybe redirect, maybe help them focus or ask in a better way. But you want to welcome and be curious about it. Next is simply to ask these parts why they're showing up right now. Uh, what is it that they need? What is it? That, how does it they, they perceive things? What are they feeling? Last, next is to receive, to receive that insight and to receive the gift that you are more than one thing. You're a lot of different things. So you may be both anxious and courageous. Um, you may be uh, have insight and fears of not knowing enough information. These, you're a both and and can enter into these situations. And so receive the gift that, that God has equipped you with a lot of different gifts in order to enter, enter into these situations, which is the last one, engaging, engaging yourself your relationships, and your world uh, in a new way based upon these insights? What does it look like to move forward in a healthy way versus some of the misaligned ways where you end up uh, creating more self-sabotage? Mm. Adam, you want to take us into type one? Yeah, let's round out the gut triad with our type one friends. 
Uh, type ones are connected in the lines and arrows to types four and seven. And let's, let's talk first about that four path. Um, the, the type four connecting type for a one makes up the stress and the converging path. And so let's talk first about that stress path. This is the misaligned traits of a type four. This is again, adopting the unhealthy attributes of a type four. Um, so you may notice if you're a type one, uh, that this shows up in feelings of re resentment, uh, being angry that others are not fulfilling expectations in a specific or ideal way, causing you to get stuck in your feelings and take everything personally. So if you're noticing, um, a particularly strong charge of sensitivity, that could be a clear indication that, Oh, if I'm a type one, I'm in my stress path. This is the type four part of me showing up in a less healthy way. You may notice yourself withdrawing when you feel moody or melancholy or misunderstood to protect yourself, really, really the image of yourself, your reputation. Uh, and you may choose to work out your em emotions alone. That, that could be a healthy response, but it could also be a, a very clear indication that you are, you know, stiff arming people that you actually need in your life to process your emotions with. And instead you're choosing to retreat and get very comfortable in your own emotional distress and sort of self isolate. There's a difference between isolation and solitude. You know, by the way, it's like solitude is necessary. Isolation is bad. <laughs> it's like hmm. Isolation is death to the soul. Um, and, uh, cause you, cause you are, you and I are both made for relationship. Um, you may notice yourself daydreaming about becoming free of your responsibilities, just being your authentic self, not having to live under the tyranny of rules. Sometimes this is really self-imposed for ones. They, 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 they so badly want to follow the rules and not be bad. And they can put, we, you know, Jeff, we call this the, uh, sometimes this is called the be good binge pendulum where it's like, follow the rules, follow the rules, be good, be good, be a good boy, be a good girl. Uh, and then all of a sudden it's like, I'm out of here. <laughs> um, and you'll, you'll, you'll notice this really show up. I'm kind of getting ahead of myself. This is really the type seven blind spot that can show hmm. up for, for a type one, but it, it can also be the type four, like, Hey, I'm tired of all these rules. And it can be this kind of rebellious flare that can sort of show up in the life of really uncharacteristic of a one. Honestly, it can, it can, it can, it can take even the one by surprise. They can ask themselves, how did I get here? Yeah. Um, you may notice a self pity, uh, a certain envy of others that could lead you to secretive self indulgences. This again is that sort of be good binge pendulum of like, well, now I'm sort of hiding in the, these indulgences. Um, and, uh, you may notice that beginning to show up. And so that is a clear indication of a stress path. Uh, the unhealthy ways that types four, a type four can show up in the life of a type one. Now there's also, that's also makes up the type one's converging path and the type four offers tremendous gifts to the type one. So you may notice yourself being less focused on I'm going to, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to use what's an unfair characteristic here. Cause nobody's just all left brain or right brain. I mean, we, we are both brains, but you may notice yourself as a type one move away from strictly black and white thinking of just what's right and what's wrong. And how do we fix this? That's very left brain solution based. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden you awaken to beauty and emotions <laughs> and you have these intense emotional experiences and, 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 and feelings and you're bursting with passion and creativity and experience. And so you're, you're experiencing this right brain, left brain integration. And that my friends is a real gift that the type four brings to the world. And if you're a one, they, they, the, the type four part of your heart can really gift you with this experience. You may notice yourself, um, withholding judgment and making mm -hmm. room for, raw, unprocessed emotions. Um, one of my dearest friends in the world is a type one, Jeff, and he'd be the first to tell you. So I'm not, I'm not, this is not public shame. This is, you know, he, he would laugh at himself and say, be the first to tell you that 
if you come to him with an emotion, I'm sad, I'm hurt, um, I'm lonely, he is going to dip into a left brain solution and attempt to hmm. fix that, fix you. Yeah. <laughs> And he wants to help, he, he, but, but he sees this as a black and white problem. Okay, your fear can be fixed. Here's a Bible verse for you. Uh, yeah. this, will fix your, this will fix your fear. But what happens when, when he's operating um, in, in, as a healthier version of himself is he holds the space beautifully. I mean, better than anybody, honestly. Um, and he makes room for raw, unprocessed emotions and authenticity to just run wild. And... He's not afraid of it. He holds the space and, 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 and still has all the truth when, when the time is right, he'll, he's going to bring the truth, but, but he's not afraid of the emotions. And this is that type four part of his heart, that converging path. Um, you may notice yourself setting aside your to-do list and slowing down and just smelling the roses, honestly, experiencing the beauty of the present moment. It's like, you, you even begin as a one and, and, and ones really want to get here. This is where they want to be. They, they, they're tired. There's a certain exhaustion they can carry from being assaulted by imperfections. Mm -hmm. And that converging path, they begin to see the beauty in the brokenness. It's like the beauty of imperfection. You go out in creation, you have ugly and beauty and growth and, and, and death all wrapped up in one, you know, I mean, I just spent a week in Greensboro, North Carolina on retreat, Jeff. And it's like being out there and seeing all these broken dead tree branches hmm. and dead grass and weeds, but there's also beauty and growth and everything is green and mm -hmm. there's squirrels playing on trees. And it's like all that imperfection and, and stuff, it all lives together. And so there begins to be a certain tolerance that the type hmm. one has and seeing the beauty in all things. So this is the converging path for a type one. Now, ones are also connected to seven and sevens make up that blind spot and that growth path for the one. And so let's talk about the blind spot. And we've already kind of tipped our hat to it a little bit, but um, you may find yourself reaching for escape hatches. Um, you know, in the IFS world, Jeff, you know, you, you know, very well, these are called firefighters. This is, I'm looking for a strategy to put out the pain. You know, my life mm -hmm. is, my life hurts. Uh, I need to find something to extinguish the pain. And the, so these are, this can be unhealthy indulgences. Um, this can be a, a, usually for the type one, it's an escape from their own inner critic. It's that binge on the pendulum. I'm, I'm tired of being good. I'm tired of the pressure to get it right all the time. So I'm going to swing. I'm going to overcorrect and I'm going to do something that seems very irrational, very out of character. Um, and then I'm going to, when I sober up emotionally, I'm going to go, what have I just done? Uh, but this is, this is a, an escape hatch that you may notice yourself leaning toward. Um, it, it may also be just a, um, an irrational urge to just do something that seems crazy. Like, <laughs> Uh, I'm going to take a trip. I'm going to have a second drink. I'm going to, I'm going to do something and I'm just going to do it. Um, yeah. I deserve it. Uh, you know, it's just this urge to do something that maybe normally wouldn't feel right to the type one. Um, another classic way you may notice this blind spot is just a, just an avoidance of feelings of pain. And that's really what all these escape hatches and coping mechanisms is about is getting you out of pain but you may notice just a, an in total intolerance to any kind of feelings that hurt, sadness, disappointment, shame, loneliness, uh, those aches, you know, I, I have a very small window of tolerance for that. And so you may notice yourself avoiding or even reframing those, those negatives into a positive just so that you can try to uh, again, escape those. And this is that blind spot, but that's not all that a type seven is. Sevens are also a tremendous gift. Um, and the type seven, uh, makes up the growth path for the type one. And, and so some of the ways that that shows up is you may experience moments of grace and joy, um, and, and just, you know, have noticed a, a more self-accepting others accepting heart, 
um, you may notice that you're less angry, uh, for example, over imperfections and, and more joyful, just a, just a happier, more pleasant hearted person. You may notice that uh, you're enthusiastic and spontaneous and playful, uh, fun, you know, giving yourself the permission to have fun. There's a certain uh, health to, hey, undo the top button, like <laughs> unbutton and like relax a little bit, you know, like ha- enjoy your life. And this is this is a gift that sevens can bring to the type one is to know when and how to relax and not take everything, not take yourself so seriously, but have a good time. Enjoy your life. Um, you, you begin to see that life is not all serious and daunting, but it's actually rich with life-giving experiences and emotions and and freedom and abundance and autonomy. You know, like you you, you can you can be yourself. And um, you may notice yourself becoming less rigid, more relaxed. Um, taking great delight in the present moment. And so um, this is an example of how that type seven uh, growth path can show up for the one. In the aware exercise, um, again, it's the same as it is for the other types, but it starts with A and awaken. And so if you're a type one, it, it's, it's, you know, there's a, there's a call to awaken. You can't do self-leadership when you're, when you're asleep you know, the first step is there's essentially, there's an essential piece of this and it's waking up. It's noticing, noticing and naming these parts of you as they're showing up and how they're showing up. Um, and then second is to welcome what you're noticing and naming. If as a type one, especially you meet your type seven blind spot escape hatches, for example, with judgment, um, it's not going to go well for you. If, on the other hand, you greet your type one, type seven escape hatches uh, with uh, with kindness, with befriending, with a welcoming spirit, um, it's going to it's going to if you if you're curious with them, it's it's going to be life changing for you. It's going to be transformative for you. And honestly, those parts are going to want to come under your self leadership. Um, ask A stands for ask. Ask these parts of you that are showing up in your life right now what they need. Um, ask them what they're, what role they're trying to play. I mean, it's, be curious with these parts of yourself. And what's crazy is it's not schizophrenic at all. You know, like your parts talk to you um, all day. I mean, your inner critics talks to you like it, they talk to you. Um, so what if you, what if you took the lead in talking to them? Um, and that's what the, this ask step is about. And then the R stands for receive, receive the gift of each of these parts, each of these aspects of your soul that are showing up for you. And they, they're playing these roles because they just want to help you, um, receive the gift that they are. And then engage the E stands for engage. This is okay. With this awareness, I'm going to engage my, my life, myself, my relationship with my own internal family in a different way. And uh, Jeff, is there anything you want to add to to that, or as we as we kind of round out this discussion, did I miss anything? No, Adam. I, I one, I think going through each of the different ways that we are connected to other numbers, um, is that it, it does add a level of complexity to the enneagram, but it also gives honor to the complexities of who we are as people. Yeah, and that I am many things all at one time. And I have a lot of competing desires um, that some are healthier desires, some are unhealthy. So even whenever an unhealthy part of me wants to show up and to meet my needs in an unhealthy way, there are other parts of me that know that and that I do have the opportunity to, uh, to ask for help. I know that in my own life, in my own recovery, one of the things that comes up a lot is uh, asking for help, using the phone and using the meetings. That's and right. as a six, I, I sort of kind of just live alone at, at times. And uh, and I, I wonder if I can trust. I, I live with this fear of maybe I'm too much. And yet I also recognize uh, the better parts of me, the healthier parts of me, remind me that we have a team with YEC. We have, I have friends. I have recovery friends. 
I am just one text message away from being able to reach out to someone and get some help and to get on a better path. And so all of these parts of us speak to how complex we are, but we also, they are gifts. They are uh, parts mm -hmm. of what make us uh, strong and give us the capacity for change. And we want you to feel honored that you, you don't, you're not just stuck. That's just a part of you that feels stuck. There is an opportunity for growth and a path forward. We just have to learn how to engage with these parts and then ask for help when we need it. Yeah, very well said. Well, Jeff, thank you. And, and to those of you listening, thank you for joining our discussion of Lines and Arrows. If you found this helpful, be sure to like and subscribe. Don't forget to ask us your questions. You can reach out to us in the comments. You know, Jeff and I love interacting with the comments on YouTube and Instagram. And so feel free to reach out to us in the comments or email us at info at your .com. And if you would like to know more about the Lines and Arrows and this reality that Jeff is naming, that we are more than a number, be sure to check out our book, More Than Your Number. Uh, the last section of the book lays out the specifics for each type that Jeff and I are walking through. You can have it there in written form, and it provides you also with self-coaching exercises to help you get to know yourself better and practice this self-leadership that we keep talking about. Um, it's always a pleasure. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you in our next episode.